Welcome sisters, brothers, friends to this Vocation Sunday service at the Hackney in Stoke Newington Methodist Circuit. Come into God's presence. Leave behind worries. Leave behind cares. Leave behind prejudice and preference. Come to God who accepts all, who receives all, and who loves all. Come and worship our surprising God. Let's sing the Psalm 98. Let us pray. God who calls and equips, we seek you, not for what we can do for you, but in response to your incredible love in our lives. We celebrate your all-encompassing love and the people who have made you known to us. We recognize that your Spirit has worked through countless people to make your salvation known to us, and we take a moment to recognize this. We praise you for God's love made known in Jesus, the one who calls so many different people in so many diverse ways and in a variety of contexts. We open ourselves to your love and guidance that we may respond to your calling and help others recognize your love Amen. In our prayer of confession today, your response will be, Lord, forgive us. Let us pray. For the times when our love has not reflected your own, Lord, forgive us. For the times when our love has been too narrow, Lord, forgive us. For the times when we give our love a price, Lord, forgive us. For the times when we have withdrawn our love, Lord, forgive us. For the times when we confuse duty with love, Lord, forgive us. In the name of your Son, who gave his life as a gift of love, to bring us home while we were still far off, who rose from death, that we might also be raised and be united in you, we pray. Amen. And we are sure of the forgiveness of God. God's love for you is not dependent on what you do. God's love for you doesn't diminish when you lose focus and you lose your way. God's love for you remains as it 
always has and always will be. You are forgiven and held dearly by the loving arms of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we pray like Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
1 John chapter 5 Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he has testified of his Son. King of kings, majesty, Lord of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, my strong
As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you, henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. When I read biblical passages like today's, I experience a certain discomfort at the repetition of the invitation to love, or the command to love. I've come to realize that my discomfort doesn't stem from Jesus and Christianity's emphasis on love. I feel overwhelmed by the way today's world approaches the word love. I grew up in a family environment where my mom didn't have to keep saying I love you to me and my two sisters. We knew of her love for us by the way she hugged us, gave us permission to rest our heads on her lap, and told us stories. I can't speak for my sisters, but at times, I thought she hated me too, especially when she would discipline me with punishments like praying the rosary, kneeling over corn canals. Let me remind you that I was brought up in a Roman Catholic family. When I became a young adult, I learned from some psychoanalysts that hatred is often proportional to love between two people, that sometimes we feel hatred and love for the same person at the same time in certain situations, and that hatred only happens because the person or people who are the target of it matter to me. Now that I am becoming a more experienced adult, not to say elderly, I suspect that the world has changed and the hatred is spread today is no longer directed at people who matter to the hater. The hatred is di directed at groups that have no direct relationship with the individual. Love has also become easy on people's lips. Friends say, I love you to each other, without necessarily committing themselves seriously to that love. In difficult times, love doesn't always appear in behavior, as it does in the ease of saying, I love you. On social media, there are millions of haters who send offensive messages to other people whom they themselves don't know personally, but who are envious of those other people's achievements and protected by the appar apparent anonymity that social media offers, spout the hatred of those who make a positive difference to the life of society, or who sometimes don't even promote the collective good. 
but who are successful professionals in their fields. The philosopher Hannah Arendt wrote a book entitled Ahimen in Jerusalem, a report on the banality of evil. In 1962, she went to Jerusalem and attended the trial of Eichmann, one of the key architects of the Holocaust. To Eichmann, he was just following orders from above, caught up in a social machinery that allowed little or no room for questioning. According to Arendt, there was a trivialization of evil in Nazi practices against Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, and other minorities who were exterminated in concentration camps during the Second World War. Currently, I have the impression that we are experiencing a trivialization in declarations of love, even when we don't mean it because one feels good to hear, I love you. I have also the impression that speeches and demonstrations of hate have been naturalized. Gradually, we are getting used to hearing hate speeches and witnessing hate behaviors, as well as losing the sensitivity or the indignation we felt when we faced with them in the past. Therefore, I believe it is high time we turned our gaze to the love that Jesus showed for his disciples. It is time we heed his command to love again. I hope that one day we can talk about the gospel in a different way. One that doesn't start from the polarization between purity and sin, that doesn't start from the opposition between eternal condemnation to hell and salvation. But that has, as its starting point, the love of Jesus. In John chapter 15, the verse 10, Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Jesus chose his disciples from unlikely people to accomplish surprising tasks. Fishermen, tax collectors, not a single religious leader among them. No experts in God's teaching, no scholars. They were chosen to spread Jesus' message of love. Jesus continues to choose you, my sister and my brother, to bear fruit. Fruit that demonstrates that you care about what is happening to the people around you. Fruit of love, not of hatred. How many times were the disciples reminded that they didn't choose Jesus and he chose them? Jesus chose his disciples and you to go and bear the fruit of God's kingdom. What a time to bear this fruit. The world has been forever changed by the pandemic and we face economic challenges political radicalization in some places, a rise in mental health issues, and a decrease in hope for our future. I am pretty sure that you and I have been chosen by Jesus to be his disciples for this time as it is. The world needs healing and hope. It needs to remember God's love for us all. Love that it is displayed when we love one another. Love that is displayed when we love one another. In the first letter of John, the chapter 5, the writer follows a Jewish line of argumentation. To settle all matters in dispute, the Jews demanded two or three witnesses. 
John, the writer of the passage being read, fulfills this rule by presenting three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood. The water where uh, Jesus was baptized and the blood that he shed on the cross, who together testify that Jesus is truly the Messiah, the Son of God. If we believe this, our faith statement comes through love that considers the world relevant. Saint Augustine, who lived in the fourth century of the Christian era, wrote, Love, but be careful of what you love. Augustine might have meant that we become what we love. So if we love things, we can be entrapped by those things we love, whether it's our furniture, our clothes, food, drink, or what is present in the culture in which we live. I would add that we have to be careful of what we hate too, as we can become both what we love and what we hate. Let's love people, not things. Let's loathe the lie, the injustice, the persecution. Let's love Jesus Christ and thus we will be more capable of loving people. Amen. In our prayers of intercession today, your response will be, let your name be known and let your love be shown. Let us pray. In the presence of the broken and the downtrodden, the powerless, let your name be known and let your love be shown. Love which both binds the broken but confronts the powers which break people. In the presence of those who do not know from where their next meal will come, let your name be known and let your love be shown. Love which both feeds the hungry and challenges the greed of those who would withhold blessing. In the presence of those of us whose lives are tarnished by choices made. Let your name be known and let your love be shown. 
love which both washes the dirty feet of walking in the world, but also seeks to clean the grime from creation as we travel. In the presence of the isolated and the lonely, the marginalized and oppressed, let your name be known and let your love be shown. Love which both seeks to find the lost and bulldozes the walls which would keep people outside. In the presence of those caught at crossroads with a damaged map and broken compass, let your name be known and let your love be shown. Love which both leads the way and sits to wait with those afraid to move. In the presence of those who are silenced and those straining their senses to learn of hope, let your name be known and let your love be shown. Love which both shouts of God to the world and listens to the stories of God from those still seeking. Amen.
Let's say our closing prayer. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Now, disciples of Jesus Christ, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. All in the name of Christ. Amen. Have you all a blessed, a wonderful, a fruitful week. In the name of Jesus. Amen.